here at Sigma World with um, Crypto Mega, and as you can see from the uh, nice jacket, uh, your full name is Megan. Nelson. Megan Nelson. from US. Uh, hi, Crypto. Uh, hi, Megan. I mean, tell us about you, what you are doing first, and then how you get into crypto. Uh, hi, thank you very much for having me. I know we've tried to connect on other occasions. Uh, you're a very prominent journalist uh, in Cyprus, I hear. So it's uh, an honor to do this interview with you today. Um, I'm basically, I'm on a world tour right now, world speaking tour in Web3, helping educate, which we need more now than ever, um, you know, in light of what's been happening with FTX and everything else, and advocating for women, as I'm wearing a world of women on the back of my jacket, NFT, I'm really supportive of women stepping up in this space and taking their space here. But I'm a high-end portfolio consultant for, for NFTs and crypto, uh, for celebrities, brands, and investors, and also helping them enter Web3, so bridging the gap between Web2 and Web3, trying to reach mainstream. That's my goal. I want to deliver the message to mainstream in a meaningful way and use the platforms of these bigger voices, industry leaders, celebrities, to to kind of guide that conversation so they can add meaning to this instead of, you know, what's happening, which is kind of a little bit chaotic now in, in the world. So I, I want to onboard new users in a place where with information they can trust that's also entertaining and that we break it down and make it simple. Okay. Break it down, make it simple. I don't know if it's simple for crypto, but uh, yeah, I mean, so you advocate for that. I mean, uh, also, I know that there were a lot more women needs to get into this space, especially when we do events also in Cyprus. We don't have a lot of women. <laughs> and how, but how do you, I mean, how do you track how, do you, how, how you, are, you are working to bring more women in this space? Uh, so I'm involved in a lot of NFT communities. And I know in the outside world here, it's NFT. They automatically shut off. Like, ugh, no. And uh, I did a Twitter Spaces earlier today for two hours before I took the stage. So 6 a.m. I woke up. I'm really dedicated to the community. I'm really dedicated to giving back in that way as well, not just speaking or helping the top, you know, the celebrities, the investors. I want to give back to the community, help educate where I can. Uh, and I think that the women, they get onboarded in that way in an in-person kind of, a, a more sa a safer space, a more personal space where they can hear other women speak, where they see other women taking their space when mostly, with mostly men at the table. Because I think that's very um, encouraging of them, for them to step up and decide, hey, I have a place at this table too. Maybe I should get involved in this. And then the second part is, for example, we were at VCon with Eva Longoria, and she was saying that it's from one woman to another. So one woman tells their network, and that woman tells their network, and we all kind of get together in this way. And I have private chats on Twitter, which I absolutely love. One of them is called Board Ape Ladies, for example, and it's 80 women in Board Ape Yacht Club that does spaces weekly. We all support each other. We have meetups around the world, and this is how this movement is going to propel forward by us continuing to deliver the message and being relentless about it in a positive way. So you are a board ape sculptor. How much you have? You are the second people, the second person actually I met last week in Web Summit. Another person that had two board apes. Uh, uh, again, he's an influencer and tries to push this out. Uh, but how do you think? Uh, how do you think? The, how do you see the NFT space right now, and where do you see it in the future? Well, I think the NFT space now from the outside world and perspective is totally dead. But that could not be further from the truth in the in, inside inner circle of this community. I mean, anywhere I go in the world and I see somebody with a Board Ape Yacht Club shirt or I understand that they're in the club, I walk up to them and it's like instant family. Like we are all so connected now in such a way that we never were before in the Web 2 iteration, so to speak, right? Like all the suits that we wanted into their world, now the suits want into our world and we're just a community supporting each other. So it doesn't matter your status or your rank or whatever you are, everybody wants to support you because you're in that family. And so the other NFT groups as well, and I mentioned World of Women, which is the jacket that I'm wearing, it's a very safe space for them to get involved on Twitter, listen, maybe speak a few times. I mean, it's, it's very cool. The networking they do is insane. And actually, the NFTs have real awesome utility. A lot of ticketing, for example. And that experience, today we spoke about it on Spaces. Gary Vee, for example, in VCon, he issued a, a ticket you know, through NFTs, token gated, and that ticket unlocks an experience. But not only that, now all holders of this ticket get an exclusive party with Snoop Dogg coming up somewhere in the future. So how could we do that in the Web2 world? I mean, it just, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, I mean, NFT, especially for communities or even celebrities, they can actually pinpoint their main ambassadors 
through this NFT process and and work with them to achieve better results. Uh, but uh, I'm curious, I'm always curious, by the way. <laughs> I'm curious before crypto, what you are doing? I mean, you are in finance, you are... How, how did you... Actually, how did you involve in crypto? I mean, what was the first moment that you actually involved with crypto? I really like this question because I hope that everybody watching, and especially the women, can understand that you don't have to have a background in finance, per se, to get involved in this. You don't have to be tech savvy. You just have to want to be open and to learn. So uh, I started out, I did a master in Spain in 2009, and it was founded by the president of Google, the very first class, and it was to digitize brick and mortar companies. So it was basically Spain launching an initiative to help digitize companies. So you can imagine it was all brick and mortar back then. Uh, and a few years later, they flew out some blockchain developers for a class reunion. And I was like, oh my God, I'm looking around. I'm like, do you guys, do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? This is insane. Like this is revolutionary and, and the seed planted and it just never left. I work with startups along the way. Um, I almost got involved in mining. I ended up not doing that. But then I turned back to, to crypto and I started listening to hundreds of hours. And I mean like relentless, hundreds of hours of audiobooks about traditional investing, all the biggest guys, Ray Dalio, Warren Buffett, all everything. And nothing, nothing resonated with me. It just wasn't what I was looking for. And I came back to, to Bitcoin again. And it was like, man, this is it. This is it. And I decided I'm going all in on this and my knowledge and my research. I researched 10 to 12 hours a day for years, for three, four years. And um, I, I started investing, con managing my own portfolio. And then I started lecturing at our country club, which is full of like middle aged white males who are, you know, heavy hitters in the traditional finance world. And I started telling them, guys, this is super interesting. You've got to listen to me. I, I did my first lecture and I thought nobody was going to show up, like five people. I was like, you know, is this. This is kind of like taboo right now. And the room, I showed up and it was full. It was overflowing. People were so interested. And so I saw the interest and I thought, wow. And lastly, what I, what I want to say is about their wives. So I, I started consulting for these men for the, the portfolio allocation, actually. And that led to helping with their Web3 strategy for the companies. But I would take their wives aside or their significant others and say, hey, you and I can do something too. You know, that financial independence, that understanding of how they could get into this space. And they would look at me and be like, no, I don't do tech. I don't do finance. Throw their hands up like that. I said, no, no, no. Just give me 30 minutes. And their face lights up. So it's really important to advocate for, this, for them in this movement. So you, you, you mentioned that uh, you started with the blockchain develop so you can code? No. Ah, no. no. no but, um, yeah, but one of the problems in all the countries and all the ecosystems that I saw is that we, we don't have enough blockchain developers. And okay, we don't have enough blockchain developers, but we don't have also enough women blockchain developers. What's your message about that and, or maybe suggestion how, how we can solve that? So many people ask me, I mean, I just did an event with SBC as well, which is another big iGaming event, and I was one of the only two women on the whole stage for that particular stage, which was helping casinos with their metaverse strategy and, and all of that. And they asked me, hey, can you help us get in touch with these women? I mean, there have to be women out there who know how to do this stuff. And so they are there, but they don't step up as much because they feel like they don't check all the boxes. You know what I mean? Like men, they don't have as hard of a time stepping up for the roles even so but women I, I we've had this conversation many panels around the world if they feel like they don't tick all the boxes on a job offering then they don't they don't apply even though they might be really talented and really fit for the job so we need to keep spreading this message keep spreading it to companies help them actually kind of adjust their hiring messages even to get women and and minorities and people underrepresented to actually step up for these roles that are qualified Okay, we're at Sigma, and it's an event that connects iGaming, crypto now, blockchain, AI, medtech, uh, emerging tech. How do you see all this combining and evolving? I just watched the, the movie uh, playlist Spotify on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. If you haven't, I highly recommend it because I kind of see it reminiscent of where we are now in crypto. It it's, goes back to the days when it was called uh, Pirate Bay. I don't know if you remember that, but that's how everybody downloaded free music. And they were all rallying and saying, this is our right, this is our movement. All the people came together. And, you know, it didn't work out in that way because they weren't willing to meet halfway anywhere with the regulators and with the artists. So then Spotify came along. And that's kind of like where I see us in between now. We're ready for this movement, we're rallying for it, but we're in the very, very early stages. So as we speak, it's getting more and more mature and, and 
Bitcoin and blockchain can revolutionize the casino industry in so many ways, in privacy and efficiency, um, you know, in, in just being able to transact immediately and not have to wait that lockup period of like two weeks sometimes. There's so many benefits and not to mention the transparency, right? For the, to audit the casinos and to understand how they're doing things. But where I really see this playing a key role is with NFTs and loyalty. Loyalty is my thing. You know, these, a lot of iGaming companies think I'll throw more money at them and I'm going to keep them. And that's how they're, that's how I'm going to get them back. I'm going to chase them and throw money at them. But that's not how this works. And I think they should take um, kind of in, uh, a, a clue from the community around Web3 on how this is to be done and give them special badges, give them wearables within the metaverse, give them some kind of incentive other than money to be proud of representing their casino. Yeah, metaverse is a huge thing starting now. Let's see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, your prediction for the industry. I would love to have your prediction and what exactly what also you want to see. Okay. Well, I want to see these bad players wash out. I want to see them gone. I want to see all of it cleaned up. I mean, this is, it happens in every cycle, but this has been the worst case in crypto history, right? FTX, it's been the saddest, most tragic case because so many people got affected by it. And even the big guys put their faith in this. But I always go back to not your crypto, not your keys. We stick to the principles of Web3 and that's self-custody. That's, uh, you know, being cautious. We have to take, you know, um, accountability for our own actions and, and education, right? Because if not, then we're still relying on the same old system to, to guide us through this. So my prediction, I think now it's going to be rough waters for a while. I think more companies are going to come out of the woodwork that have been involved with FTX, and it's going to be a little bit tough. But this road is tough. No revolution is easy. And as soon as they regulate stable coins, as soon as we get some kind of regulation, and hopefully it does not stifle the DeFi, it doesn't stifle innovation, as soon as we get that regulation, then we'll have companies in, you know, like the UAE, that they're doing 250 million euros in revenue a day. They have zero exposure to, to crypto, zero. And so if we want that liquidity, if we want more money to come in the space, even though it might juxtapose what we stand for, then that's how we're gonna start to mature as an industry. So as soon as that happens, maybe within the next 12 to 18 months, I think that there's going to be a lot more capital flowing in.